Welcome to USMLEFastTrack.com. The section we're going to talk about today is from First Aid for the USMLE Step 1, 2013 Edition. Page 549. Alright, now we're going to move on to the concept of perfusion limited and diffusion limited. Now looking at the picture on your screen here, you see the picture of an alveolus. You also see a picture of capillaries, which is divided into start, middle, and the end of the capillary. And it's also colored differently. The blue color indicates that this is the deoxygenated blood. The red color indicates it's the oxygenated blood. So deoxygenated blood is what comes in and it goes out once it gets oxygenated as the oxygenated blood. Now looking at the perfusion limited, you see that oxygen, carbon dioxide, and nitrous oxide all um, in normal situation has is perfusion limited. Now what this means is that let's say you have 20 mmHg of oxygen. That complete 20 mmHg of oxygen is going to make its way to the capillary. It's going to oxygenate all that deoxygenated blood and sends it out. So in that duration, in that whole length of the pulmonary capillary, that uh, oxygen it's going to make its way to the capillary and it's going to you know oxygenate all that blood that's coming in. So this is perfusion limited. So in this, there is that gas equilibrium that occurs early along the length of the capillary. And that is what you see here in the picture of perfusion limited. So looking at this concept, you could tell that the only way you could have more oxygen going into the capillary is if there is an increase in the blood flow. So if there is more capillary blood flow, there's going to be more oxygen that's going to make its way to the capillary and eventually leading to more oxygen being supplied to the body. Now the second thing we're going to talk about is the diffusion limited. Now diffusion limited is an abnormal condition that occurs with conditions such as emphysema and fibrosis. So think about a capillary with fibrosis. Now because the wall of the capillary was going to be thickened, it's not going to be easy for that oxygen to simply diffuse through. So therefore the equilibrium does not occur. So if you look at the picture here, you see that if there is 20 mmHg of oxygen, only 10 mmHg of oxygen is actually going to make it through. So in this case, there's not going to be an equilibrium by the time blood reaches the end of the capillary. What is the equation of diffusion? The equation of diffusion is the area of the capillary over the thickness of the capillary times the diffusion constant times P1 minus P2. The diffusion constant times P1 minus P2 is the difference in the partial pressure. What condition would decrease the area in the capillary? The area in the capillary is decreased in emphysema and COPD. What condition causes the increase of thickness in the capillary? Increase in thickness of the capillary occurs in pulmonary fibrosis. So therefore in both pulmonary fibrosis and in emphysema you would have a decrease in diffusion. What happens when you have pulmonary hypertension? If you have long-term pulmonary hypertension, this can lead to core pulmonal which is the right-sided heart failure. What are the consequences of right-sided heart failure? With the right-sided heart failure, the right side of the heart is not able to adequately pump the blood out. Therefore, leads to a backup of blood. And this you could see by signs such as jugular venous distension, edema, and hepatomegaly. For more information on this topic, click on the link in the description section below. For a full USMLE Step 1 review, be sure to check us out at usmlefasttrack.com where we help you review the entire first aid for the USMLE Step 1 with high quality videos and hundreds of detailed pictures for a better understanding of the material. So to learn from the best USMLE review book, be sure to check us out at usmlefasttrack.com.